Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Art of Selling podcast. On the show, we talk about the best tip sales secrets that can help you sell more stuff to more people. And uh, on the show, hopefully today, you're going to get some value because over the last couple of years, we've spent close to a million rand learning from some of the best marketing gurus and sales coaches out there. And now we're sharing this information with you for free so that you don't have to struggle the way that we did. Um, in studio today, once again, we've got someone called John Jock from Rensburg. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> and we've got Gilbert Kumpukwe. Always, always good to be here. Yeah, awesome. So in the previous episode, we actually touched on neuromarketing and mm. we touched on the fact that it's, you know, basically just psychology as a whole. But at the end of the day, it's understanding how it can actually help you, you know, sell, we always say sell more stuff to more people, um, understanding how the brain receives messages and uh, how you can leverage that in order to get someone to pay attention to what you want to have to say, be receptive to what you have to say, and essentially in take action, the specific action that you want them to take, which would be to buy your products or services. Now, in today's episode, we want to talk about how an offer can help you increase your actual sell-through rate. Because I believe in my heart and my soul that most people actually either don't know or they either are too lazy to come up with just really good offers for their business. Now, an offer could mean many different things to many different people, but we can break it all down in a simple way, which is just an offer in my mind would just be something that you put out into the world that's aimed at your target audience that is allowing them to better understand the value that you're actually offering as a whole. In essence, an offer could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but it is a very simple thing actually. And it's basically just putting something into the market, a message into the market that is beneficial to your target market and that is of massive value to them. And it looks appealing, it looks exciting, and it just looks valuable in itself. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys want to touch on that, John Jock. Yeah. Maybe um, you can start. I mean, look, an offer, if, if you just look at the word, it's like, you know, it's an offering. It's like, what do you have to offer? And I mean, like at the end of the day, it's like how how you, pre again, it comes down to presenting. So if, if you can, like in business sense, if we look through a business scope, it's like, how do you present the thing that it is that you're selling and how do people perceive the thing that it is that you're selling? And all of our efforts, everything that we do really reaches the point and we all hear people say, you have to make a no-brainer offer. It has to get to the point where it's a no-brainer offer. But how do you get to the point of getting someone to think, oh, yes, this is a no-brainer offer. And that's how I will latch this onto the first uh, episode that I joined you guys on. It's like understanding those principles which we unpacked on on the brain and understanding like, you know, people really deeply because I have a deep love actually for people and really observing at the end of the day. It's like sometimes I catch myself, I'll sit, I'll have a coffee and I'll just I'll just watch. I'll, I'll just find myself watching people or watching the trees. And I, that's a bit. Yeah, it is what it is, but like <laughs> I, I catch myself in these moments many times. Um, but again, offer comes down to understanding it's the way that you present your thing, whatever your mm. thing is that you're selling. And again, how do people perceive that thing? Have they seen many of these things? Like if they've seen many of these things or messages that is connected to the thing that you're selling, it it will become uh, not irrelevant, but it will be there. They, they will have this thing. Um, if I can come up with this word right now with it, like people will, ha will build a block in their brain when they see it because they've seen it so many times. So. Sure. Uh, they become immune to it. Yeah, there's a specific mm. word for it, but um, we'll keep banner it. blindness. Yeah, but yes, yes, uh, yeah, is. that that word and offer blindness also is a thing. Um, yeah, yeah. What, Gil, on yeah. your side, is there any two cents on on what you think an offer is? Uh, an offer is your ability to communicate the maximum amount of value that you can add to someone's life, so that they are benefited and never felt i guess to uh, felt as if they were swindled into mm. making a decision because the offer ultimately is there and crafted and designed to help them get the maximum amount of value that they can so that it is towards their benefit at the end of the day because we as we spoke about you know it's it's a person to person and when you can make the person believe that what is being put in front of them is truly to their benefit in the most amount of uh, value that you can add, 
they then take that as something that is genuine and is truly beneficial to them. And I think in a nutshell, that's kind of like what, you know, putting an offer for me is at the end of the day. Let's objectify it in the two different spaces of B2C and B2B. If we have to look through a B2B lens or a, or a B2C lens, essentially an offer could be something as simple as a discount on a product that people are already aware of, that people already want, right? It could be if you have a specific watch brand and like let's imagine Rolex had to do a 20% off on their Rolex, not that they might want to consider it. I don't know even how often they do it. They probably don't. They don't need to because the brand is strong enough. But I wish they if, did. <laughs> we all wish they did. <laughs> but in theory, a discount in itself is an offer. Mm. But at the end of the day, not every single brand is fond of doing discounts. But there are an offer is not a discount in itself or discount alone in isolation. It could be many different things. Like you said, it touches on value, it touches on benefit. I think a simple way to sum it up, and I think this started with you know some of the best marketing gurus in the world, some of the you know the goats, some of the OGs, and Dan Kennedy comes to mind, you know, and and Russell Brunson piggybacked piggybacked on that a lot, but it's really understanding. Here's the massive benefit that you're getting. Here's the pain that we're removing alongside the benefit. And here's the risk that we're removing as well. Mm. So from an e-commerce perspective, an offer would be, here's the product that you've been eyeing out. Here's the discount that we're now offering you as well. So you don't have to pay, you, without the pain point of paying the full price. Mm -hmm. But here's the risk removal of having a 30-day guarantee should you not enjoy it the way that you thought you would. And from a B2B perspective, you know, we're an agency, we sell the B2B. is like we can say, for example... We can guarantee you a specific return on your marketing without you having to spend more money on ads or your money back if we don't get it right. Mm. And you can just repeat this recipe for really anything in life. I mean, mm. what would you say, John? John? See, one thing I've just, again, bringing it back to the current market and to the current environment, I, I, I'm a bit obsessed with just um, observing the market and studying, I like I like to see multiple different viewpoints of people, and I, I like to again I like to observe things. So w what I see a lot on an offer perspective is like understanding that if if it's a business and you're trying to differentiate your thing that it is that you, I'm just gonna say a business and you're trying to differentiate the thing that is that you're selling, it's like many. If I bring it back, so to the ecom perspective, it's like also understanding that. If you can, not just an e-com though, but if you can bundle uh, certain things, if you can put it in a put it in a bundle, let, let me actually give a fitness example. Like if you are a fitness guy and you are out there and you're looking to increase your sales on the fitness perspective, where you're looking to increase the, the amount of money that you get from the people that actually pay you, LTV wise or whatever that might look like. It's about understanding how can we put a bundle together that would again reach that state where it's a no-brainer because I'm getting all of this value and then how can we get them into that ecosystem and then increase the throughput on it but my long story short and really just making it simple is like cold friendly offers are I believe it's where it's at right now because the way that you structure a cold friendly offer is like something that hasn't been seen before it might be in a so-called red ocean but it's like Taking it, uh, I see it through, again, through an evolutionary lens of things. It's like we as humans, uh, based on evolutionary psychology, and I study a lot of like Dr. David Buss's work. This is where this comes from. But it's about understanding that we as humans, we operate based on two things on an, through an evolutionary scope. It's based on either replication or survival. And once we understand those two things, we can really get uh, granular and, and to the throat when it comes to that, because a lot of people they shy away from it and they don't really want to, you know, lean mm. towards d marketing that way. But at the end of the day, what happens is when you do go very granular, it's, it's risky too. But think about it in terms of like someone like uh, Manscaped uh, or someone there, they, you know, there's a line that they ride and they, they ride it very well. And that's why they do very well. But that's just one example. But the fitness example is super easy to understand because once we are able to understand what is the next one, the most logical next thing for them to buy if we structure it in like a if you're a fitness coach and you could be selling subs or whatever that might look like 
but it's about how do we then put those things together to make logical sense to the person that yes, if I do buy this stuff, I know as the business owner, I can still get more money out of that one person through bundling things and through creating that offer and then bundling things and then allowing the, you know, the lifetime value of the customer to. Yeah. I mean, I'm hearing you say personal training package and then also buy these supplements should you want to. And, you know, you're going to be buying my personal, if you're an online coach, for example, it might be even better. You can sell a training plan, you can sell a meal plan, you can sell a supplement plan, and you can stack all of that together in order to create a really appealing offer. You can say, hey, buy the training plan, I'm getting you the meal plan free, or buy the meal plan and training plan and you're getting the supplement for free or mm. supplement stack for free or whatever it is. And I think the the message around this and the conclusion around this is that an offer is really limited to your own imagination. That's, that's what I'm hearing you say and that's essentially what is crucial to understand is that an offer is not just a discount. An offer is what are, you, what are you really putting out that's adding value to your customers, that's a benefit to them, that gets them excited and that actually screams value to them. Um, because, you know, our uh, head of ops who joins us on these podcasts, he heads up the lead generation side and we work with a lot of beauty clinics and, and in his mind, you know, uh, from a B2C perspective, if you're a laser clinic, an offer would be to do a 30% discount on your first laser treatment, but then pay full price for the rest. Or essentially knowing that you can do 50% off on a treatment, but knowing once you've given that person a good service, they're most likely going to come back. You know, like a hair salon, for example, mm -hmm. you need to understand that people are very skeptical about where they do their hair and who takes care of their hair for example but if you get someone in on the first time and you do a good job they're most likely going to stick for you for a very very long time which increases the the lifetime value of that customer mm. so offers are used not just to try and get a return or to make a little bit of profit because most of the time depending on the offer you might not make might might not make, make much profit initially but what will happen is it gives someone the opportunity to get a taste of your brand your business your product your service and if hopefully if you've done a good job they will stick, they will bite, and they will stay with you for some time, which will increase the lifetime uh, lifetime value of that client or customer, and it will increase the, um, the profitability of that client or customer as well. Um, mm. I think it's key, and uh, actually you were touching on important points there around, you know, when you, you mentioned bundling, and I think that's something that is definitely quite, um, you know, valuable and and impactful because you know a person will look at that and say like oh i'm getting this i'm getting this i'm getting this i'm getting this mm -hmm. but i think what is important and you've highlighted it is you don't want to just put products for the sake of putting products if they're unrelated mm -hmm. that value actually won't necessarily be there because bundling products together is not a case of I'm going to put things in here to make it seem bigger than what it is. It's actually putting products, associated products, mm. complementary products, yeah. that if I use them together, I am actually going to experience the true value yeah. of what you are selling me. Yeah. So we've got to also be careful because I know, you know, it's very easy to go and, oh, let's bundle stuff together. <laughs> you know, you maybe you, you're a toy, uh, your toy store, uh, or, or maybe you're you know a, a, a brand that sells baby products, and you know you've got a one year. There's you're selling to moms with one year olds, and you might want to put in a bib there. Um, you might want to look at putting in you know a, a a a chewable toy, for example. But then you're gonna go and throw in um, you know the sunglasses, and it's like no, but it's not. Yes, I know the child will grow, but the yeah. sunglasses aren't going to help yeah. them with anything, right? And like the next most logical thing for that person, which they would be like, okay, I bought this, but oh, now I need this. Yes. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like just understanding what it is that that person would actually need. And that mm -hmm. also then obviously comes down to understanding why understanding pain points are so important because if you cannot put your shoes in your own customers and, and you haven't walked a day in their life, it's like very hard to understand that actually what, would be the next most logical thing if just to latch on if you're a gym bro i mean like mm. then you understand what gym bros need like it's like no exactly yeah. yeah yeah i think it's crucial to obviously know your target market because it will help you to come up with offers and i think like i said it's limited to your own imagination like we started our own fragrance brand um recently gil you hitting that mm. up with, with someone on our team and um essentially we've had some really good success within a very short time but if you look at it we've had offers 
literally since the day we started. Uh, we had discounts mm -hmm. and now we have buy two, get 20% off. So as much as we want to maybe shy away from discounts, but now we're doing buy two, get 20% uh, off. Next month we're doing spend a thousand rand and get a free gift. Um, essentially we might bu say buy two, get one free or buy. So these are all ways that you can look at creating an offer. You need to understand that there's no fixed recipe and the recipe that you see from people like Dan Kennedy, Russell Brunson, Harmozy, those are things that obviously work within that specific space uh, in itself. And yes, that is a really good formula, but it's not. There are many ways to skin a cat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and an offer is a lot of people would like. But an offer is something that is just a benefit and a risk removal. And no, it's not necessarily that per se. It's just something that someone finds valuable that is getting them at the right time excited about the value that's on the table. Yeah, and I re I think that's really what sums it up in my mind. And how you structure the offer on the back of that is up to your own imagination. And you understanding the customer better will allow you to put something that actually resonates with them quite well. And we spoke about neuromarketing in the, in the, in the previous episode. And by you creating a good offer, you immediately getting your customer's brain to be receptive. And it goes, well, that makes sense. That is a no-brainer mm. offer because mm -hmm. you, you've hacked the brain to understand, and, whoa, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. So if someone had to sell a Ferrari for 100K, 100,000 Rand, we would be like, damn, that's a good deal. We're well, definitely going to buy it. Like, mm. that's a really good offer. Yeah. So in essence, it most likely won't happen. But the, the the analogy I'm trying to use is that it all got to do with, holy shit, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Holy shit, that's mm. an extreme, really good value. But I think there's a second component to it is that a lot of business owners are scared of offers because it doesn't, you d dive into your margins. Mm. So it's understanding that if I do a discount, I lose profit. If I bundle products together and or give something away, I lose profit. But there's a back door to it that we need to understand. There's a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that it helps you acquire more customers at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you, touching on what you said, is it's up to you then now to stack the products on the back or the services on the back or getting them to buy the next thing that makes most sense to them. That's going to add the most amount of value to them. And that will essentially help you increase the lifetime value. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. that's just a, a great way to sum it up. I was just wondering if there's any last words on mm -hmm. your side. And then, Gil, I'm going to give you a quick shot before we round this off. Yeah, 100%. I got, I got one thing to add there. It's like uh, the, the, your, your cycle of iteration between offers, as you just stated, is dependable on the business. It's important because if you are running one offer angle, one message angle, one offer angle, and it doesn't work, I mean, if you try to keep running the whole time, you have to like, obviously, well, it's not working based on the data, it's not working, we have to find something else that's working. And then the speed that you can iterate and place new cold friendly offers in front of people, there's obviously also like you run the offer, cold friendly offer, whatever it might be, you run it, it hits diminishing returns, then you have to be able to have the skill. That's why they say offer creation is so such a powerful skill to have, because then you're able to just change it, um, not 360, but it's like, you know, and then just in keep increasing that uh, value that is being portrayed of what it is that you're selling or whatever that might look like. Mm. Uh, but that's the last thing I would say I would add to that point of conversation. Yeah. Gil, any last words? Yeah, I think um, don't be scared to run offers. And understand if you understand it as a way for me to or myself or my business to acquire customers at possibly even you know the lowest cost that you can actually acquire them, because a good offer will pull in you know by the dozens of customers, mm -hmm. but it's understanding that you're taking on customers so that you can in the long run actually make them more profitable in the long run increase the lifetime value but the offer in itself is what's truly going to help you pull them in in to begin with and it's also then breaking down and understanding before crafting that offer what is it that is actually going to add the maximum amount of value for my customers if they were to say yes to this mm. you want to win you want to win the long game absolutely mm. so it is literally the long game mm. And from my side, that's the last thing I'd say about that. A lot of people don't think about the long game because they either can't afford it or they're just too impatient. Mm. Well, that was cool. 
Don Jock, thanks yeah. for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks One for more, having me again. Another time. And uh, Gil, thanks for your Always. time as well. Really enjoyed it. And for you guys, I hope that there was some value in it for you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>